Although reformers direct much of their energy toward political issues, they also crusade on behalf of what they term moral concerns, like the campaign to eliminate alcohol from the national scene. Prohibition is really an excellent example in the way in which moral values, religious values, influence public policy, become really central issues in the political arena, which is very typical of the 20th century at different periods. And so prohibition is an example of the way in which organized political pressure on the part of a variety of reform groups that include a lot of women's groups, such as the Women's Christians Temperance Union, help to get a national amendment passed that makes the country dry. In 1917, advocates of prohibition succeed in getting Congress to support a constitutional amendment banning the sale and manufacture of alcoholic beverages. Two years later, it is ratified by every state except Connecticut and Rhode Island. From the moment prohibition is passed, there are efforts to start the appeal process. There's some suggestion that people thought, oh, well, things like wine and beer would be available. But no, it's bone dry for prohibition. In fact, it probably did change drinking patterns because it's easier to brew a hard liquor like gin than it is to brew a lighter alcohol content like beer. But nonetheless, it's still the case that Americans probably drank less for this period. But people who wanted to drink did drink.